Richard Erny is a staple of the Rochester art scene. If you've ever been to Clothesline Festival, you'd be hard pressed to miss him. Just look for the ceramics that catch your eye from a distance and draw you in by their intricate and unique glazes. We had the pleasure of visiting him in his studio. Here's a look. There's something about clay when you get your hands on it. It's elastic, it's got pushback. You can make it do what you want. It's very seductive. And, and I never thought of myself as an object maker or a creator of something out of nothing. I, thought I, I always thought I was an idea guy. And then I ran into clay and it was a, a difficult challenge. It also is wonderfully therapeutic to work the clay on the wheel. Even after 40 years, sitting down on the wheel and throwing pots, it calms you, it centers you, it brings you to a good place. My work has by nature always been functional in that I needed to sell it to make a living. So most of the things that I make are things that one can use on the table, on the wall, around the house and I've tended to keep it that way. Uh, I have on occasion made large pieces, made sculptural pieces, made public art, but most of my work tends to be things that one can use and have around the house. I love the thought that there are hundreds if not thousands of people around the country who wake up to their morning coffee in one of my mugs or cups, who use my plates, who have their bowls on their table. Um, it gives me a great great deal of pleasure. My work is work that I like to think people find harmonious in their environment. I like to think that it adds to their environment. It's not shouting out, hey, look at me. I want it to be something that people are comfortable with, that it gives them pleasure just to have around. One of the things that I take a lot of interest in is developing surfaces and glazes of, of interest. When I started, um, I just worked with glazes that everybody else was using. Um, that's what you do because you learn to make pots first and then after you've learned to make a pot that you're proud of, that you want to keep, then you start over again because you, how do you glaze it? and it's like starting from scratch again. What I've learned over time is that if you just keep working, something will pop up, something will happen. Rather than waiting for that one great idea to strike you, just keep working. It wasn't until I discovered wood ash glazes, which is a type of glaze where it goes on like a normal glaze. It, it just coats the pot evenly, but as the kiln heats up, the glaze will melt and run and, and flow uh, along, the, along the pot in a rivulet-like fashion. And I love the way that that worked with the form as well as giving it an earthy quality. I want my pieces to affect people on many different levels. I want that first hit to be there. That's what will draw people in closer. But then my glazes are subtle enough, they're complex enough, there is depth to them, multi-layers, so that as they draw them closer, as they look at them closer, they're seeing the micro crystals, they're seeing the variegation of color, the transition from one to the next. Um, they're just getting that nice feeling of this just looks just right. Color and texture have always been important to me. And I feel like I'm just sort of stepping outside of myself now and coming into some brave new worlds, if you will. I'm not sure where they'll lead.